It's Granny in the kitchen having Granny juice and talking to my audience here. Pull up a cup of cuppa or tea or Perrier or carbonated water you make yourself or kombucha or whatever floats your boat. Okay. <laughs> and speaking of boats, ships, relationships, oh my goodness. Have I got a story for you. So what happens is I go to 42nd Street Oyster Bar. It's a very well-known place in Raleigh and it's the place to go if you ask me, besides St. Roach, for St. Rock, excuse me, <laughs> uh, for oysters. So you go there for oysters. And I hadn't had oysters in a long time. And we're in October. So it's a month with an R. Brrr. And that means it's cold enough, the water's cold enough, so that you can have an oyster. And feel confident that it can be had raw and it will be tasty and delicious. And you don't do that in months that don't have an R in it. So for instance, May, June, July, and August. Those are summer months. So if you're going to have raw oysters, it's recommended, but I'm not an oyster doctor. And I'm not qualified to give medical advice at all. And all I know that batteries, they work because there's a plus and a minus. And I know electricity works because of anaparesis and cataparesis. And I know magnetism works because they have an opposite poles, a North Pole and a Southern Pole. And I know that's how the electrochemical things of our body works. Uh, we have protons and electrons, and then we have neurons, but they're not neutral. Think about neutrality. It's boring. So hence we have these, you know, night and day. <laughs> Hot and cold, cold and hot. Sorry, I'm making noise down here, rearranging my knees. <sighs> so, I met a man at 42nd Street Oyster Bar who was off to the races and I had to go, oh, easy boy. And I'm summarizing it. But I recognized projection right away and I recognized how skillful I've become at not avoiding a confrontation that needs to be had but avoiding a conflict over a situation that's only in somebody's mind. I broke a date with him for breakfast that was sort of out of the blue and it was like we had just met and talked and that was a Sunday and it was like already going to be Tuesday. So that's like pretty soon after just talking to somebody on a Sunday. I met him on a Friday. I went to the park on Sunday. Nash Square in Raleigh, if you want to know, I sat there. I was in the sunlight. And I was thinking about how fun it was to have met somebody just off the blue like that. But it was more like, you know, it was fun. And I gave him my digits because it would be like, yeah, that would be fun to go out with somebody again. And maybe there's a connection. And um, whether there is or there isn't, isn't the point. The point is, is there compatibility? You know, we're now in our 60s. You don't see if there's chemistry. We all know how to F-U-C-K. I'm an expert in the S-A-C-K. 
And I don't do J-O-Bs because I'm not a W-H-O-R-E. <laughs> okay? <sighs> Try to keep this clean sometimes. And then I'm going to be honest with you, I actually did go back onto Bumble. I did. And um, I met some man and I find out he's a widower. But as it turns out, she was depressed and it turns out she probably ended her own life tragically. My guess. That's the vibe. And he wants it to be like, I'm not really mourning, but her face when she was in her 30s is what shows up on his screen. Not her 57-year-old face when she died. You know? So what's that telling me is um, he wished he had given more babies to her? I don't know. But I'll never fill that void. And so I did a video called um, The Empty Casket, The Grief Process. The grief process. Uh, it's sort of like The Empty Casket, Grieving the Relationship That Never Was. Because children of narcissists often give so much love to the wrong type of person who demand more and more of it. And that's why I, I'm now this, in this place 100% of what does Cat want? In alliance and in alignment with my divine purpose because I've suffered a lot and I've been given so many gifts. I've had, I've had so many gifts, so many uh, things happen to bless me that I'm in the right path. I'm on the right path for me, but you still have these sense, these feelings of, of self doubt, or am I doing it right? Or like, what's going on here? And it's wonderful because it's not, diminishing me it's allowing me to see how much i've grown so this is an example too um the guy i met uh, the, uh, the oyster lover who i met at the park is a great guy but then i broke the date on the tuesday because on the monday night i couldn't sleep i've been having really difficult time sleeping And I was very sneezy here. Um, and and uh, yes, they spray all of this stuff there. And there are some things that I do that I would love for you to buy through my link that help me with that. So I will provide you with detox methods um, that I find helpful because we do. Other than complain about it. Yes, they're being sprayed. They think we're roaches. Yes, what happened in WNC was not real. And it was uh, M-A-N-M-A-D-E because of S-E-E-D. Yes, 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 yes. And then, and then what? Communities came together. And those who lost their lives lost their land as well because everything washed away. And it is a recognition that this is a war zone. Those people are in a war zone and those people are cleaning up from the war zone. But this is just, if you want, this is a story. This is a, a screenplay. That's what we're doing. This is screenplay ideas for the futurist. If you were an evil entity that wanted to take over a planet, what would you do? Would you use seemingly natural occurrences such as wildfires um, and other things to get the people to move? They're just roaches, really. They're in the way of what your plans are. So that's really what's happening in the sci-fi movie playing 
And then the other th thing that's really happening is there are uh, communities that have not been completely destroyed and they will become even stronger. And those people then, and the future of those people then, are where if I am coming back to this planet and I have to reincarnate, I'm going to be a child of those people. The people who rebuilt the communities, the people who homestead, the people who know enough to have enough gas and fuel. And we all know what um, ethanol is all about and the bootleggers and all of that and ethanol and what runs farm equipment. We all know that there's other stories behind the story, behind the story. But that's not this story today. This story today is I broke the date on the Tuesday at five o'clock in the morning saying, I hope you turn your phone off. This text is coming in early. I have had insomnia. I'm not going to be able to make breakfast. There's no way I want to be at Big Ed's downtown diner at 930 in the morning. Having gone back to bed at five. And I slept until nine. And I made sure he got the message. And it seemed to be okay. Until this. He's like, yeah, let's go for a bike ride. How about I come get you? We throw, we throw the bikes in the back of my truck. And we go to the Falls of the Noose trail. And I'm thinking, okay, that sounds like fun. We were going to do that on a... Sunday or whatever it was, the following Sunday. So I met him on a Friday. Two days later, I'm talking to him in person. I break the date for two days after that, but a week after that time, we're going to get together again. And in the meantime, he, he wants to talk, so... I'm on the phone with him late after I had, hadn't talked to a good friend of mine for a really long time. And I'm talking to this guy too. And I'm like, I can't do this. I know my vulnerability. And it's the drop who I am to like be the cheerleader for this guy to make him the best effing thing ever, to make him the most successful ever. To always stand by him. Hey! And I don't get anything out of it. They just use me up and uh, I don't get paid. So. I say all of this. You have to really think about this. I'm doing impromptu. And I'm summarizing decades of my life. I'm summarizing my, all my marriages. And that, and that last narcissistic relationship doesn't count here. Because it was so bad. That was the lowest of low. If that was hell on earth, I'd been through it. And we can make heaven on earth. And that's why that those people in uh, Western North Carolina that have, are rebuilding communities. And the ones that maintain literacy, classical learning, etiquette. Uh, women learn how to do women things. Men learn how to do men things, but the men respect the women. They don't beat them. They don't say I'm the boss. They actually have a council with each other. I mean, come on, let's go back to it. How's the battery going to run? How's the minus going to run without the plus? How's the cataparesis going to work without the anaparesis? Huh? So none of this the man knows best. He leads because he's the boss. <coughs> pisses me off though the way a man decides that he's got the voice over her in the privacy of their own home and reminds her of it uh uh that is not the way it works here to create balance no i'm not a feminist
I'm an elder and I'm showing Gen Z the way that our hope They're the, and then the next ones that come, whatever they name them. But the, the beautiful people of, of my state, North Carolina, um, I plan on living a very, very long time. And I have been to those mountain towns. So I'm not looking to end my life so I can reincarnate into that experience. No. The years and the decades of my experience in my life are going to be what allows me to be of use to women so that they don't get to be my age and say, I wish I hadn't have done that. Because I never had guidance or any other administration of helpfulness my entire life. Other than from the divine. And if that's my experiment, <laughs> it's working. And the divine now I recognize is both the masculine and the feminine. It is both from above and it's from below, the earth. Getting back to Gaia. I'm leaving my Planetary Tantra um, playlist up in my videos. I, I don't know whether or not that is demonic or a dragonian or the Sophia, Sophia Pathos, like the Polity, whatever it is, like the, the, the bad trilogy. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that I'm a child of God and Jesus is my brother and my mother is the planet. And she's a rock. And she's not flat. She's not, um, she's amorphous, just like we are, as above, so below, duh. And she has a field too. So she's got an electronic field. We have one too. And guess what makes her go? The plus and the minus, the masculine and the feminine, the anapresis and the cataparesis, the electron and the proton okay it's so simple but yet so complicated and divine so I said I said to him and in, in, communicating in text we had talked long enough uh, a couple hours ugh not his fault. I love talking, but then it's like, that's my problem when I'm getting to know somebody is that I'm such a champion of them. I have to work on that. I have to become a champion of myself, my own life, you know, let them garnish my entree. Why am I always trying to be the garnish on their plate of life? Right? <laughs> it's amazing. I pie with my little eye. I pie. So, where we are is that I texted him that I didn't want to bike, I wanted to walk. And the reason why is like I just felt really out of balance. And he was telling me all about how he liked roller skating and he could skate backwards and help. And that's like, I do not want to put myself into a man's element. I do not want to go skating because he likes skating. I and mean, I want to go biking because he likes going biking. I need to get to know this person to find out where's the equilibrium. Are they going to, are they going to grab at me? So he, he kind of grabbed at me, you know, energy-wise. And um, he got, like, a completely affronted about um, when I said, I'd rather go walking than um, being on a bike. And he misread it and flew off the handle. And I went on and on. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's 
let's just take Sunday off to ourselves. In fact, I'd like to take a full, a, a full step back. No, I, I'm not looking to do anything other than to take a breather. The things I could have said were, you've just created a whole narrative around my motivations, around uh, calling off the bike ride for a hike on whatever day that was, Sunday. My motivations were I need to walk right now so I can talk to you. If you're on a bike, I can't talk to you. I'm in unfamiliar territory. You're darting around. You're like Mr. Like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I don't care what happens to my body. My body is my commodity. And on top of that, I am still recovering from the dog bite. It took four weeks for the laceration to create new collagen growth because I stitched it myself with a laceration wound kit I got at Walgreens, but not until like day four. And then I had to like figure it out and I cried. And boy, was it ugly, but now it's looking pretty good. I may have to wrap it and squeeze it again. You know, bring the tissues back together so it doesn't keloid and then you have to massage it. This is not medical advice. Castor oil works really, really well. C-A-S-T-O-R, but you know, I'm not a medical doctor. This is not medical advice and I am not in any way, shape or form qualified to tell you how to do anything with anything. But if you're a girl, I wouldn't put batteries in that dildo. Mm-mm-mm. You wanna desensitize yourself to men girls? Use batteries that go zzz, motions and things he'll never be able to do. Now learn how to use your grip. Learn how to use your inner muscles rather than complaining that he's pencil dick or thin or not big enough for you. Why don't you stop becoming dependent on zzz, and these big, huge thumping things? That's war on you, girls. Shame on you, girls. See why I'm not a feminist? I tell them not to use the batteries. Use your muscles instead. Why make the guy do all the work? But he's a guy. He's going to do the piston thing. But then when you get to be on top, oh my God, you get to dance. But if he's a thruster, if he's one of those guys that thrust when you're, when you're on, it's like, and I'm not talking about, I'm talking about marriage sex. I, all of my experience with these, this information and the delight comes from being married. And I found out about the thrusting thing when I briefly dated this guy in 2016, 17. And it was, this is bigger than he was. He may have been, um, Small, but he sure was proud. Absolutely no passion. And his O was the only O that existed. And that's when I learned you can't you can't have sex like that. Empty sex for a female. Well you're then you're gonna ask for favors. He wasn't gonna give it. He was a lazy SOB. And he had a picture of the Lord's Supper. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper in his dining room, which nobody sat in. What a hypocrite. He never did anything with this. That is what you see between Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's the Holy Grail, it's the vessel. It's the masculine and the feminine. It's the plus and the minus. It's the cataparesis, it's the anaparesis. It's the light, it's the, it's the dark. It's the day, it's the night. It's the up, it's the down. It's the hot, it's the wet. How much more obvious does Mother Nature and Father Sky have to make it? Motherfucker, 
fuckers and fuckers like yeah mofos and fabos <laughs> no is it oh it's a fa fafus no yeah fafus mofos and fafus <laughs> fafus mofos and fafus fafu motherfucker yeah, it doesn't go the same, right? Everybody likes to use motherfucker. Why? 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 Because it sounds better than father fucker. Because we all know life doesn't come from the father. And if it's the motherfucker, at least he's trying. <laughs> Can't blame him for trying. So... That guy kind of like spiraled and I said, let's, let's take a step back. So you got upset that I wanted to walk rather than bike. Well, now it's off. <laughs> I bike. My bike has wheels. It has tires. It has air in them. It's ready to go. And I was excited, but then I read into the, I read into it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to be around this guy that's overly enthusiastic. When I need, I was like seeing into the future and I like, I know what I do. I start paying attention to this person. And then that's all I'm doing is paying attention. Then my body and that asshole in Virginia because Virginia is for lovers, include, especially the ex ones. He led me into so many issues. It's like, dude. It's almost like he wanted me to get hurt. It's wild. Huh. How could anybody be such an asshole? I look back at it now and I'm aghast. I didn't know. Huh. So I'm looking out for numero uno now, obviously, and I don't want to put myself in jeopardy of any kind. And no one's gonna make me feel guilty about that. But the, the nail on the coffin of the potential relationship, actually, because he's in the friend zone permanently now, he doesn't know it, but he is, is that he then brought up, this is three times now that you broke a date after you said you were gonna do something. I'm like, okay, the first time was the breakfast, which was on Tuesday, which was the first Tuesday after the Sunday I met you. That's two days. And the second time was like um, the Sunday in which I broke it by switcherooing it by saying, let's walk rather than bike. What was the third? I had no idea. I even looked back at our text messages and I think that's where I saw it. And that's when I realized the dude was living largely in his own head, which is what my exes did. They make up their own reality. So I'm going, <laughs> you don't have to be smart to actually make a good living or be a good lawyer, huh? That's what he is. Moral of the story. You can be very, very good at lawyering. But are you good at life? And perspective? And I think he's a little bit of a liar. I think he lies by um, exclusion. But they leave things out. So where I'm at then is bubbling back to Bumble. And I met this person on Bumble who was the widower. And this is like these two guys, I'm, I'm sort of not juggling them. There was never any con uh, time conflict. It was that it was happening at the same time within the same month, span of, of weeks. And it was a good thing too, because what I, I realized about the guy who I was very compatible with, 
is that he's still in love with his dead wife and he still feels responsible for her death. And it's my experience in my heart that she killed herself. And um, she was very depressed. And who knows, she may have saved up all of her pills and taken them all at once. And he does seem very emotionally unavailable. So he's a good guy. Oh, uh, that last one in Virginia. I loved him so much because I could see him as God could see him. And I can see this fellow. You're a good guy. I can see what a good father you are to your daughter. I can see what a, how much you loved your wife. Maybe you neglected her. Maybe you couldn't meet her emotional needs. Maybe you were always cold to her. I don't know. Maybe none of that's true. Maybe he was like actually there for her and she was always a depressed case. Okay? But that he was always going to love her no matter what. And that me having been a love-starved child and in narcissistic relationships where there is no actual love of you, it's more like they love what you do for them to make their life magnificent. To then not get this love from this emotionally unavailable man because he's still mourning a corpse? <laughs> no, thank you. It's like, dude, I honor your process. In fact, you, what, you should not even be dating, what, is what I would be telling him, because I do feel attracted to you. There is compatibility. I see that we could actually be, but not the way you are now. And maybe not ever, because maybe you never, ever, ever, ever will be available to any woman. And maybe, maybe, maybe you were never available to her. And maybe, maybe, maybe she knows it on the other side and you know it. So we don't know. We just don't know. I'm going to talk later. No hard feelings towards that guy. No harm done. No harm, no foul. It's just I'm learning so much that these guys are growing too. And it's my life. I'm the star of my own show. And my goal is to align with the divine with how my mother and father, the true ones, really want me to be. Because the earth ones did not do a good job. So I'm picking up the pieces. I'm becoming my whole self. I'm doing my spiritual kintsugi. And I'm learning, learning, learning to love myself. And so shall we all.